He'd ripped the phone out of my hand. He'd ripped out my hair extension. I get it. He he was triggered and he was upset. That side he showed me last night, I just, I could never see it again. Last night's fight and Sapa's choice to get physical has changed everything. Shekinah can deal with his controlling nature, right? She can deal with the fact he weighs her daily or he wants to change the way that she looks. But did Sapa's temper last night push her too far? It's up to her. She can live and go. And if she does it, I understand because I deserve that with my stupid Temper. Sapa's woe is me shtick isn't working, but before we get to that, let's rewind to the start. So we left the pair after what was their worst fight, after Sapa showed signs of abuse. You see, Shekinah recounted how Sapa grabbed her phone out of her hand in such an aggressive way that it wound up ripping out one of her hair extensions. Last night, Sarper and I got into a huge fight and I decided the best decision for me was to go check into a hotel. And right now, I don't know if I even want to see him again. Now, from what we're told, it sounds like a explosive fight. But keep in mind, there's no footage of it. It happened when the cameras weren't there. What we got to see was the aftermath. We saw Shekinah packing her bags in tears, desperate to leave. And despite Sapa seeming oddly resigned, almost in a state of shock last night, today, Shekinah tells us, Sapa has had time to reflect on his actions. He says he's ashamed of himself, he hates himself, he uses like really strong language to describe his feelings. I think what happened was he didn't have a birthday gift for me. Sure, and rightly so, he should regret what he said and did. But, Shekinah, could it also be that this is him manipulating you into getting back with him? Now, we don't exactly know what Shekinah meant when she said he was using strong language. But I think it's a safe bet. We can probably assume that he's trying to make her feel guilty for leaving him. And all of this happened because of a birthday present, apparently. I told him after we met with his parents, now we're going to go home and I'm going to give you your gifts. And I think he was panicking because he didn't have anything to give me. Shekinah's convinced that the fight started because Sapa hadn't got her a birthday gift. She claims he felt so embarrassed by that that he then insisted on buying her a vanity that she didn't even like. And while that may well be the case, while this may have stemmed from a combination of embarrassment and maybe even alcohol, none of that excuses or justifies the way that he acted. And thankfully, Shekinah is fully aware of that. And I was like, but I don't like any of those vanities. Like, let's just wait. But it turned into a huge fight. And like, why would something like that turn into a fight? I don't even need a gift. Right, so it turned into a fight because Sapa's narcissism couldn't handle the fact that Shekinah had got him presents, but he hadn't got her anything. Which raises the question, why on earth hadn't he got her anything for her birthday? Like, he clearly couldn't handle the fact, he couldn't deal with the fact that it made him look like a failure of a partner. His ego was hurt. And while Shekinah assures us it's never got this bad before, she also pointed says she'll never be able to forget what happened. He'd ripped the phone out of my hand. He'd ripped out my hair extension. I get it. He, he was triggered and he was upset. That side he showed me last night, I just, I could never see it again. Sapa getting so angry that he attempted to snatch her phone in itself is terrifying. Why? Because that phone is literally Shekinah's life raft. It's literally her only means of getting help if she needs it. Of being able to call an Uber, for example, if heaven forbid she finds herself in a dangerous situation. And of course, it's literally her only way of contacting her family. Sapa tried to forcefully take that all away from her. So it's completely understandable that it triggered Shekinah. It triggered me so much because I had an ex that was very um, physically abusive. And I know that my hair getting ripped out was a mistake. He didn't mean that, but he did mean to grab my phone. 
Okay, so that provides a bit of clarity. Shekinah tells us ripping her extensions out wasn't intentional, it was an accident. And okay, for as true as that may well be, sorry, but we can't just overlook the fact that it was also a direct consequence of Sarpa's actions. If he hadn't been so aggressive, if he hadn't yanked the phone out of her hand, her hair wouldn't have ripped out. So sorry, I have a problem with how easily Shekinah's excusing his actions. But thankfully, she is holding her ground when it comes to her limits. What is and isn't acceptable. Because like regardless of the fact that I've experienced that before or not, it's still not okay. It's wrong and it feels terrible. He just thinks we're going to fall back into like our happy life and things are going to be great. Now, by no means is my intention to victim blame here. But at the same time, the truth is we have all seen from the start just how many red flags there are in Sarpa's behaviour. I mean, need I remind you, Shekinah's closest friends and family, her loved ones, have literally all warned her against this relationship. Yet she's chosen not to heed any of their warnings. She's burnt bridges with her own daughter and her sisters and her mum because of Sarpa. She's chosen and it is a choice. She's chosen to fly back to Turkey and play happy families. Only all of that has now come to a frightening halt. So after what's happened, what does she think is going to change? Because one thing's for sure, we know how Sarpa is now going to act. He's going to do whatever he needs to, to try and win her back. She took everything with her and went away. Even Adonis, my boy. So it was a strange feeling and I just felt a regret like a puppy. You know? Oh, Didums, poor Sarpa. He was so aggressive with his partner that how dare she? She took all of her own belongings and her own dog and fled from him. Poor him. But just look at him. He's wallowing in self-pity. He's acting like he's a kicked puppy or something, isn't he? And to make matters worse, he then has the audacity to complain about how Shekinah didn't even want any, any of the vanities that he offered to buy her. Yeah, I don't know, maybe that's because you didn't buy her a proper birthday present, Sarpa. From internet, I look all vanity models and she denied all of it. Now, a normal person would be like, oh, Shekinah didn't like any of the vanities. Fair enough. A sensitive person might be like, oh, Shekinah must be really picky about vanities. But Sarpa, he's taking this as somehow a complete rejection of his character. He clearly took it as a personal insult of sorts. But interestingly, he then also reveals what I suspect was the real cause of why he was upset last night. There are so many uncertainties and that K1 thing that I told to my family and I saw my mama got upset. I mean, so much things. When Sapa broke the news to his family that he and Shekinah had applied for the K-1 visa, that if granted, he'd be moving to America, his mum was visibly upset. And Sapa took out his emotions about that on Shekinah. It's as if he's a child or something. Like, he seems incapable of juggling too many things going on in his brain at once. It overwhelms him. He doesn't know how to process and deal with his emotions. Only now, after the fact, in the cold light of day, he claims to regret it. I texted her. I said that I'm so sorry. I mean, I apologize for a million times. Yeah, I just knew it. I knew that Sarpa was going to try and guilt trip Shekinah. And just look at his texts. They prove it. He's saying things like, I can't survive without you. That is classic manipulation. Instead of taking ownership for what he's done and giving Shekinah space to figure out what she wants to do, he's bombarding her with messages that make her feel like if she leaves, she'll ruin his life. He won't be able to survive and go on. As if somehow that would be her fault for leaving and not his own fault caused by his own actions. It's up to her. She can live and go. And if she does it, I understand. Because I deserve that with my stupid temper. Now, on camera, Sapa at least seems to understand that he went too far last night. 
that he's caused real damage to the relationship, if it still even exists. He's apologetic, he's regretful, and he's upset that his temper caused the woman he loves to get hurt. But the question is, how can he guarantee it won't happen again? How can he guarantee that the next time he encounters strong emotions, be that embarrassment, guilt, anger, whatever, how can he guarantee that he won't lose his temper again? The answer to that question? Well, he can't. 